Next, more details emerge about a program aimed at preventing terrorism, but which also raises questions about civil liberties. Ray Suarez has our story. We take a closer look at this story now with Matt Apuzo. He's one of the two reporters who initially reported on the surveillance program back in August for the Associated Press and has continued to follow the story. Matt, you've called the NYPD one of America's most aggressive domestic intelligence agencies. What was the New York City Police Department doing? Um, well, they had uh, domestic intelligence programs that, uh, that go far beyond what what we would have expected pre-9-11 to see from any police department and in many ways operate in ways that the, the federal government, the FBI, just simply can't. Um, they have a program called the, the Demographics Unit, which the NYPD originally denied even existed. Um, plainclothes officers that uh, often, uh, you know, Arab officers who will go out into Muslim neighborhoods and uh, they're called rakers. They're going to rake the coals looking for hot spots, meaning they're going to go out and they're going to take pictures of mosques. They're going to take pictures of all the Muslim businesses in the area. They're going to go into the Muslim cafes or hookah bars, and they're just going to eavesdrop, listen to people's conversations, try to gauge the sentiment of the owner, maybe write down his ethnicity, definitely write down his ethnicity. And those go all into police reports. So we've seen them for many neighborhoods. We've seen them for Egyptians, Moroccans, Albanians. You know, they, they, they are building these profiles of where Muslims live, eat, shop, pray, where they watch sports, where they go to internet cafes. Um, it's just a, it's a, an incredible process by which they're, um, they're bringing in information about uh, the Northeast Muslims. Now, in this kind of surveillance, in these ongoing investigations, was there first established probable cause, the evidence of an ongoing commission of a crime, um, some reason to believe that there was a crime going on, or were they just watching? Right in the demographics, in the demographics unit, these are the the undercover, the plainclothes officers. Um, their reports mention no evidence of crimes. I mean, I think we found one evidence, uh, one report that said, uh, "Here's a store that appears to sell counterfeit DVDs." Um, so the demographics unit is just out there raking the coals or just building these databases. Then there are these informants, you know, the, the mosque crawlers who go out into the mosques and, and are investigating, you know, uh, one, they're, they're investigating if there is a lead, they're following it, but they're also there just serving as listening posts inside the mosques. So we've seen documents where the informants or the undercover officers inside the mosque are reporting back on even innocuous things that, uh, that imams are saying at Friday prayers. They're reporting back, the imam says, Hey, we should all we should hold a protest about the Danish cartoons. It should be a nonviolent protest. I want everybody to, you know, maybe write a letter to a politician. And this stuff's ending up in police reports for Ray Kelly. Um, and we've seen evidence of them using surveillance cameras, uh, writing down license plates of people coming to and from mosques. Um, I mean, it's it's just. Uh, it really is surprising and um, really shows the trans transition and the transformation of the NYPD. How did this get started? Over the years, imams have told this program that they've been contacted openly by the FBI, asked for cooperation, which they often gave. Did the New York City Police Department determine that there was no other way to get the kind of information they were looking for? Yeah, I mean, in some of the ways, the, the demographics unit um, is built on the idea that you're going to learn more if if you go in covertly, you know, you're going to be able to uh, take a more honest pulse of the community if you go in overtly. And the idea is if you create these reports, and let's say, you know, three years from now, there's a report that, you know, from the CIA that says, hey, there's an Egyptian and he just came to the United States and maybe he's going to attack the attack New York. And we don't know. The NYPD can go to their Egyptian folder, pull it off, see all the mosques where the Egyptians are likely to go, where they're likely to, 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 to go out to dinner, where they're likely to pray. Maybe even they've collected phone numbers of people who rent, uh, of Egyptians who rent rooms to rent. And, and they've got that all at their fingertips. So that's the reasoning behind it. Didn't your reporting turn up people who thought they were already cooperating with the authorities who it turned out were also under undercover surveillance? We've uh, we found several instances of of imams who have partnered with the NYPD um, who stood shoulder to shoulder with uh, with Mayor Bloomberg um, who have been who have decried terrorism and who have been held up as allies in the war against terrorism in New York City um, and we found documents showing that they had undercover officers or informants assigned directly to them or the end their mosques. There are rules that govern domestic spies that apply to the FBI, that apply to the CIA. Do they apply to the New York City Police Department? Was the NYPD living within the rules? Um, 
Well, I mean, legally, that's sort of to be determined. The, the police department operates under a federal consent decree, basically a court order and a longstanding civil rights lawsuit. Um, lawyers in that case say these, these documents that we've obtained show they've gone beyond that. The NYPD says, absolutely not. We stay within the four corners of that. But what's, what's interesting from where we're coming from and, and what's been fascinating, the more people we talk to is, We've never really approached this as a, as a legal issue. I mean, when you look at the big issues post 9-11 in the United States, whether it's waterboarding, warrantless wiretapping, um, surveillance, Gitmo, black sites, rendition, all of those have been legal. I mean, nobody's saying, nobody's going to jail for those programs. Um, these programs might be legal. We've actually never said this is illegal. They're violating the law. But I mean, it's, it's certainly worth having this conversation, just like it's been worth having those conversations. And what's interesting about the NYPD is they have no, almost no oversight. I mean, the city council is not aware of the programs that are going on. Congress is not aware of what's going on. The attorney general has said it basically doesn't have the ability to investigate. Um, the White House said yesterday, yes, we, our money is being used here, but we're just a policy office. We don't actually have operational control. So, you know, the, these decisions are largely kept in-house at the NYPD and with Mayor Bloomberg. So we'll, we'll continue this conversation online. Matt Apuzo of the Associated Press, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me.